With the green movement going across the globe, fossil fuel producers are facing a crucial transformation. Roberto Boca, our guest on the show today, he's a head of energy at the World Economic Forum. He is facing some tough, heated discussions with policymakers, industry leaders, and stakeholders. So which technologies and which new models the industry is employing in this green shift? And how costly is the whole transformation? Last Wednesday, what happened was pretty much a slam to oil and gas companies, with Exxon shareholders voting pretty much against the company and supporting a shift away from fossil fuels, with uh, Chevron agreeing to reduce certain emissions, and Royal Dutch Shell that was ordered by court to reduce the emissions by 45%, which is huge, by 2030. Doesn't sound like a major breakthrough in this green shift. It is certainly a, an important message that uh, shareholder and, and also uh, in some case government or the legal system are giving to the energy system. Uh, we all know there is an energy transition, but this is just one part of the energy transition. There is a, a supply side that is the producer of oil and, and other elements that uh, have emission, but uh, also there is a demand side. So uh, this is a very interesting topic. So that's definitely there is a shift that is happening, but it's not as simple as it could look like. Maybe uh, to articulate a bit more that issue is, if you look at our economic system, it's really based on the energy system that we have today. Revenue from the states come from also fossil fuel, right? Not just the oil state, not just Saudi Arabia or, or Russia or other, but also the states you know, like Switzerland or other, where we pay taxes when we buy, when we fuel our car and so on. There are taxes and, and the state depend on revenue. So from it there. benefits, yeah. Exactly. There are a lot of jobs in many countries related to this. There is the, the demand that every choice that we make every day are really influencing this. And it was very interesting. There was a statistic put out by the IEA that is saying that emission uh, reduction by they are influenced by in 55% of the cases by consumer choices. Choices that we might think are simple, like electric vehicle versus combustion engine, but might be much more complex. Everything we buy, from this chair to, to anything, there will be choices that we don't even realize the impact that they have. So it, what, what I'm saying here is there's a pretty complex issue. There is a clear mandate from the world to do this transition, but it's not going to be simple. So which countries, which economies, or even which oil and gas companies are leading in this green transformation? So we, we have an issue a few weeks back at the forum, our 10th edition of the Energy Transition Index. So we are measuring countries, how well they are doing in exactly this, in the energy transition, and how ready they are for the next phase of the transition that is going to be quite a step change from the past. The countries that are in the top 10 are mainly smaller countries, mainly European. So if you look at the first four or five, there is Sweden, there is Norway, Denmark, Switzerland, Austria. So these countries have been improving significantly in the last 10 years. But when you look holistically at the 115 countries that we measure, only 13 countries have improved progressively year on year. So 80 countries have improved across the 10 years, but only 13 has improved year on year. The good news is that China is among those 13, because China, okay, that's, that's great news, right? Yeah. But it's only 13 countries. And so the question is how this transition can become really faster, bigger, and more resilient So to, to happen every year. Because the transition is not going to happen overnight. It is not. Uh, and I think it's also not such a straightforward question as many people, I believe, think because there are many people employed by the industry. Uh, and you mentioned the budget revenues depend so much on, on this particular sector, particularly in the countries like Russia, Venezuela, uh, Emirates. What are the new models uh, that the industry is planning to employ or uh, new technologies in this transition? I'm not sure we should start from scratch. We should use the facilities or infrastructure of the old economy and bring it to the new economy. First of all, there is an element of electrification. So part of the transition of the economy will be the electrification. That will require huge amount of investment in the grid and in everything that is related to electrification. We require a lot of materials that today are not used so much. So there will be more need for new materials, mining, etc., etc. So that's one element in which the current grid will be important, but will have to be extended and, and reinforced. Then there are assets already there, 
pipeline and other that could be repurposed. And, and there are already attempts we have seen in Italy where pipeline from gas were also used for, are also used for uh, hydrogen and other opportunity. So there are these opportunity uh, there, but also there is a, the existing asset, for example, coal power plants that in some region are quite new. If you take Asia, for example, some of the power plants are quite new, so it will be difficult really to stop them and start with new one because there is a cost associated. In Europe and North America, this is easier because the plants have already been amortized over decades. So it will be easier to shift from that technology to the new one. But, but it's a complex issue again. Uh, so a lot of money will be needed. Actually, again, referring to the IA report, they were talking by 2030, five trillion a year will be needed for investment in this transition. That is a huge amount of huge. money. But the good news is that there will be business opportunity. Because of course, when you have you know, this size of change, it's a really systemic change, there will be investment that will still be needed in the current infrastructure, to go back to your point. And also, you know, it's not that oil will disappear. It will be there for a few years to come, so there will be still investment needed in, in those sectors and to improve those sectors with carbon capture, etc. Because let's remember one thing, fossil fuel are not bad per se. What is bad is the emission. Correct. Investment in the se those sectors will be still needed, plus there will be the investment needed in the evolution, the new technology, the hydrogen, the batteries, and so on and so forth. Who will be covering those costs? Is it the public sector, public funds, or private sector? How can oil companies shift their industry, their production, their facility, infrastructure pipelines into the new economy? Is there a way? And what could be interesting for the private investors from the point of view as you worked for a number of years with BP? So first of all, this transition is not only for the oil and gas company, but if we talk about oil and gas company, some of them are taking the choice to become energy company. So they really go for, yes, oil is part of their strengths and they have it, but they start diversifying and start building a portfolio in in solar, in wind, in hydrogen, and new technology. So there are companies doing like this. There are others that stay in the space of oil and gas, and they say, we'll do it cheaper and less emission, but we'll stay there. So th those are different choices that different companies are making. Yeah, because there are new players that appear in the market, like for the uh, wind farms, for solar panel technology, that scaled up and became very efficient. And that's exactly the point of the opportunity. The, the cost will be mainly supported by the private sector, but I'll come back to the public sector because when we talk about fiscal stimulus that there are now with the post-COVID, et cetera, there is a huge opportunity for that money to go in the infrastructure we're talking about. But also on the private side, there are opportunities, new technology, new companies that have been increasing dramatically their market capitalization because of positioning them successfully. In Europe, I can think of Enel, Iberdrola, companies that have anticipated the move to the new technology. And, and so you can see that companies are shifting and there will be new company coming, new technology coming and new company coming. So it's really, from an investor point of view, it's a great opportunity to choose which sector there will be, you know, new technology and new company. So there will be maybe more risky than today because there is more choice in brackets. Um, because today if company, you know, if people were investing only in one sector or two, oil and gas and maybe coal, etc., was very clear the model. These are new model. The revenue model are going to be very different from the past. So that, that's a challenge that will be there, but it's also exciting in terms of opportunity for business. Mm -hmm.